they're off. Bit of an awkward break for a who dat, say who dat. I mean, I was hooked on horse racing and when I was a teenager and you know, was sort of on, on a path to be a degenerate gambler, but it, but at the same time I did have kind of a respectable career track. I mean, I went to Harvard, um, e even though uh, I think the proximity of so many racetracks to Harvard Square I kind of uh, undid my academic career. I, I, I nevertheless, you know, went, you know, went into uh, journalism and uh, as soon as I got the opportunity, I was writing about horse racing, and I've worked for for all three uh, Washington newspapers, uh, you know, dating back to 1966. But I've been uh, I've been at the Post since the late 1970s. Rails and they're into the stretch, and here comes Forget About It, Sal on the outside. In the early 1970s, I started working with what are called speed figures, which is a uh, a numerical rating that simply expresses in one number how fast a horse has run, taking into account the distance of the race and the inherent speed of the racing surface over which he runs. When, when I started doing the figures, my, my one and only goal was to understand the sport better so that I could gamble. I never had a glimmer of an idea of doing something commercial with them. I was extremely protective of them. I would you know, write my numbers in a red flare pen and, and I wouldn't even let anybody look over my shoulder to see, you know, to see what I was writing down. Uh, but the method was very time consuming. And in 1992, the Daily Racing Forum came to me and asked if my associates and I could provide these ratings uh, uh, for virtually every horse in North America. And uh, with the aid of computer technology, we've been able to do it. And uh, you know, we, we now assign a rating, a buyer speed figure, to virtually every performance by every horse. Everybody's in line, and they're off. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with twice the press on the outside. Secretary to weigh very well, has good position on the rail, and in fact is now going up with the leader. There's no doubt that Secretariat's Belmont Stakes was you know, the greatest moment in the Triple Crown, and you know probably the greatest single horse race ever run. They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside, by a head. Sham is on the outside. Even a casual fan can can watch that film and see him draw off by 31 lengths and hear the announcer say he's moving like a tremendous machine and you know and appreciate how extraordinary it was. But the, the time of the race was almost beyond imagining. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths. You know, my figures were in their infancy at that time, and they were on a, something of a different scale from the numbers that are in the daily racing form now. But some years ago, I went back to the day of the Belmont Stakes uh, and, and looked at the, uh, at the data using our current methodology and uh, you know, came up with a figure of 139, which is you know, by far the, the best of any horse I've, I've seen. They're in the set. Secretariat has opened a 22-length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He hits the finish 25 lengths in front. I, I just like the horse racing world. I mean, a single horse race just has, you know, so many mathematical elements, so many human subplots that you're, you know, you're constantly trying to kind of unravel a, a mystery when, when, when you're handicapping a race. It, uh, I, I have never tired of the, the intellectual side of racing. I mean, I, there's nothing I, I enjoy more than trying to burrow into, you know, into every subtlety in a horse race.